the Angels are in town. So the argument of Mike Trout, Miguel Cabrera pops its beautiful head into our sports talk, as it always does when these two face off, and really the past two seasons, because they've both been so special. I pose it to you this way. The fast five minutes, 30 seconds each. Who do you like in the next three years, if I had to tell you, you only got three years with one of these guys, Cabrera or Trout? Um, I think from an overall standpoint of, of everyday players that plays both defense and offense, you have to go with Mike Trout. And I love Miguel Cabrera. I'm a huge Miggy fan. I know this conversation goes back and forth a lot. I think Miggy deserved the MVP the times that he's won it. Uh, his teams were winning. He's the most feared hitter in the game. But when you talk defense, you talk speed, on the base paths, and just incredible stuff. And I know he had a bad day yesterday. I would go with Mike Trout. Well, you know what? I, Trout is the better complete ball player, no doubt about it. However, for the next three years, I'm going with Miggy because Mike Trout, although it's not his fault, hasn't shown that he can do anything when the lights are the brightest. The playoffs, they haven't been in the playoffs. And in September's have not exactly been times for Mike Trout to shine. So for the next three years only, I'm going with Miggy. Because he, now that he plays first, he's a much better fielder than he was at third. A much better, and packs much more value yeah, to but, the team. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, but in the center of the diamond where Trout's playing I in know, center Trout, field. Trout's an all-around better player, right. but I want to see Trout do something in September. Woo. Can't make a peep once the buzzer sounds. I'm Sorry. making all the bad jokes Oh, my today. gosh, you are rolling right now. <laughs> so a recent <laughs> report from ESPN shoots out that Matthew Stafford is the sixth highest paid athlete in the entire world this upcoming season, making $31 million in his salary. Does Stafford's deal make sense? Well, forgetting if it makes sense or not, it's just mind-boggling. And I know a lot of it has to do with the way the contract is structured. But I'm sorry, when you see the people who are in that list, Mayweather, three soccer players, including Messi and Aaron Rodgers, Matthew Stafford, it's not his fault. What has he, what has he accomplished to be the sixth highest paid player in the world? Nothing! It's not his fault! And I know it's the contract, the way it's structured, because maybe he'll be underpaid next year. But, come on! Seriously, reality check! That's one side of it, Matt. Well, Stoney's got to calm down. <laughs> Stoney is right, because now it's time to win and it's time to do everything. I, for one, don't care how much money he makes. And if he's the sixth highest paid or the second highest paid in the NFL going into this year, or second highest paid in the world, whatever it is, I don't care. Produce. Stoney mentioned Floyd Mayweather. I don't watch boxing. A lot of people don't watch boxing. I don't care what these guys make. I think it's been blown way out of proportion. Here in Detroit, all we care about is take us to the playoffs and win some games. And this week, Tom Luan said Super Bowl or bust. Woo! Yeah. Laying it down. I mean, he said it, so it's time to win. Enough to I don't care what they make. NBA well, I don't care either. It's just mind It is. Mind oh, mind. yeah, it is. But the numbers are crazy all over the place. Who's the highest paid piston we talked about before, right? Ah, Josh, Josh Smith. Smith. So, <laughs> what a guy. NBA playoffs continuing on ABC all weekend and throughout the great month of April, May, June, July, August. They go on forever. But at the end of the road, who is your pick to win the NBA title? I'm going to go with the Oklahoma City Thunder. I watched them last night. I thought they were the most impressive. Indiana has a lot of problems. Uh, something's, something's wrong with the stew there in, uh, in the Circle City. Miami, while I like LeBron, I think he's terrific, and he'll probably carry them far. Wade is aging and older. They're not as good of a team. I think it comes out of the West this year, fellas, and I think it'll be Oklahoma City. Thunder get their moments, don't they? Uh, I can't stand the heat, so I hope they don't win. But I'm going to stay in the West. But at San Antonio's time, after the deal that they suffered last year with Ray Allen shot beating them, I think it's time for the Spurs. Duncan is still playing good. They have their injuries, but when it's playoff time, the Spurs will come through and at least make Oklahoma City sweat. They'll beat Oklahoma City because Greg Popovich could outcoach Scott Brooks into a corner. That is true, but who's going to guard Kevin Durant? Kawhi Leonard? I think Durant is just, oh, he's just, he's just too good. Durantula is still the best nickname in sports. I love it. They, don't, they don't use it enough. They, they don't. always call him like KD and yeah. other stuff. No, I, I, I'm, I'm with you on that. I like Durantula. All right, Pistons, we got to live our glory days, or at least the best memories we've had here in a long time ever since the last championship team. The Bad Boys 30 for 30 documentary aired this past week. There were winners, there were losers. I think as the city as a whole, we won, gotten to watch this. But who won, who lost, Stoney? I think Bill Lambeer actually came out looking great, believe it or not, because he was who he is. You know what I mean? He is who he was. He didn't care. Everything he said was, you know what? And I think people didn't realize what a great leader he, he was. So I think Bill Lambeer came out the best. I would like to see Vinnie Johnson in the documentary. He can play for the Pistons. But uh, Adrian Dantley came out looking like a petulant 
I can't say right now because there are two sides to every story. He didn't give the other side. And Matt, he shared a bunch of his story with you this past week. Oh, my week. gosh. He was on the air with me uh, yeah, uh, Friday and went ballistic on Isaiah Thomas and just uh, ripped him a new one and is still bitter after 25 years. Adrian's living in Maryland right now as a crossing guard, making $14,000 a year. And he's age 60 and just hanging out. He wants that insurance benefit. And he wa exactly. He did not look all that great, but you know what? I think there are plenty of Pistons fans out there that would like to see a little bit more, like Stoney said, of Vinnie Johnson in that documentary. I thought Isaiah Thomas came off pretty well on that thing in terms of he's been butchered around the league. Talk to executives, people around the league. They want nothing to do with Isaiah. Here in Detroit for that two-hour span of the night, I thought he came off pretty well. Pretty interesting. A lot of people have always said, well, put Lambeer as the coach. Bring Isaiah as the GM. And all of us with half a sense would always say, that's a terrible idea. I almost for a minute believed after watching that, well, that leadership team could oh, work yeah. again. You get sucked back in watching stuff like that, of course. All right, how could you get sucked back in again? Fifth and final fast five minute. What would the next 30 for 30 local be that you'd like to see made? I'd like to see something on the Russian five and maybe mixing in 96, March 26th, um, uh, 90, March 26, 1997 with McCarty and the abs, something with that. I don't know if you could do an entire Red Wing edition from when they won the back-to-backs, but some of the Russian Five, I think, would be awesome to see uh, see a 30 for 30. That would have a Detroit tie. Very close to that, uh, I think the Wings ads would be an unbelievable 30 for 30. You could start with, you know, them moving from, you know, Quebec to Colorado. You could even go with the Lindros trade, but for Forsberg to really set it up. The growing pains of the Red Wings. Then the game in Montreal where Wah got sent out, and then they traded him to uh, Colorado. It was the greatest thing in hockey for about a five-year stretch. That would be the greatest. If you could get everybody on the record, guys like Mike Keene and Adam Foote, McCarty, Scotty Bowman, Mark, it would be awesome. I like both. The Russian Five would be great with the Konstantinov element, how it united a city, the town, and I everybody. Think, I think it would grab more people. I, I'm with Sto for, for us here, for Stoney and for all of us, I think it would grab more people, though, nationally, to have and internationally to watch the, the Russian story as opposed to the fringe fans but in other also cities did not care about Wings Abs. The Wings and Abs changed hockey, though, and it brought it and put it on the major uh, on the map again. Yeah, but no. outside of Detroit, at least you're having a Colorado people might be interested. I don't know if people in Denver would care about the Russian Five. They'd both be good. That was a treat to watch this past week, and hopefully we get something else. Coming up after the